Hello everybody, I'm Steve and I'm happy to welcome you to my visions. My idea circled around a toilet. A restroom was ripped open from time and destruction and now nature strikes back. That's why the facility must be changed into a neglected, broken, old and incomplete ceramic toilet. I did some experiments on a believable structure of such a heavily used surface, which was exposed to nature for some time. Then I damaged the surface by sculpting and cutting holes in it. Now it's time for some cracked concrete. The ruined place needs some creepy walls and remains of a foundation, of course with holes and gaps. Establishing irregularity and unevenness is challenging, but for the degree of reality you will not be able to ask a structural engineer. I simply followed my unprofessional feeling. After turning on a light, I can judge my work progress. When concrete crumbles, there have to be chunks and fragments. I am using physics simulations for breaking and dropping the concrete. Even if the environment does not play the main role, it's now time to fill in the ground around the scene. Again, my feeling says that my pursued goal, some kind of wilderness, gets underlined if the earth is uneven and hilly. As you can see, I do my best and check the result. Again, I am dealing with the lighting details. Then I intended to show more little concrete stones. After producing them, they had to be arranged and pulled on the corner to fit it in well. To achieve my overall destroyed impression, I continue with cutting believable random holes into the walls and the strange toilet. Everyone who has a toilet also needs a sewer pipe. Totally unconnected in this case. Let me build up a few stone pillars. I think about four pieces would be suitable, one on top of the other. The more unstable, the better. A very large pillar even overturned and hit the wall. To be honest, it's a shame. My inspiration tells me to put in another wall, differently broken. Here is the freshwater pipe. I am filling in a shattered pillar. A bit of repositioning. I create and line up some lights. After positioning them to my liking, I check the intermediate result. I outline the area where grasses and weeds should grow. A bush lives on the left. One big rock hits the base in the background. Some more grasses in the foreground. And a somewhat crooked plant. And of course there should be some moss on the walls for the idea of aging. Looming clouds. I place another bunch of funny grasses with heavy blur only roughly in the front of the scene. I create cheerful summer meadow flowers in the middle.
The broken wall receives various rather big leaves. A fern grows right at its front. I put some plants on the pile of stones. The bushes on the left get another sibling and should be lighted more carefully. But the lights turned out to be confusing, so I had to work on the bushes in post-processing. My goal was a rather soft light, so as not to disturb the eyes. Now I change the colors a bit, raise the contrast of the details and add a small vignette. There's no need for this and no right or wrong. It's important to experiment and nudge the thing in the direction you want. It's all about the unexplainable feelings you have in the creative process. Here I use a filter called splatter painting. I don't apply it all over the place. A little at the margins and nearly nothing in the center. To put it clearly, at the end you can't see much of a difference. Thanks for watching.